Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In this one, I'm going to be making my Achieving Perfection for the bottom node of A Timeless Voyage. A Timeless Voyage is a new event introduced into Magic the Magic Puzzle Quest with M21, and this is going to be for that bottom node, the Astral Drift node. Now, per the usual, I'm going to go ahead and show off the deck that I'm using, and then I'm going to go over the node, and then I'm going to go back over my deck. Why did I make the choices I made? And then I'm going to get into deck building. So how would I go about building a deck for this event if you cannot build the deck that I am showing off? Now, the deck that I'm going to be using for this is going to be a Garrick Cursed Huntsman deck. And it is going to look exactly like this right here. Now, for this node, you need to win the fight. You need to cast three or more creatures that cost 11 or more and you need to activate a Planeswalker ability two or more times during a fight. So the cast, the activating a, a, an ability two or more times during the fight is really more of the limiting factor to me because it means that you can't just make a deck that's going to loop and kill your opponent in one turn. So this just immediately takes out using some of the kinds of Song of Creation nonsense stuff that has come into our possession or like some pretty crazy prowess loopy decks uh, we can't run that. We have to make sure that we activate our loyalty abilities twice. Now, the veteran of, the veteran objective means that we need to cast three or more creatures that cost 11 or more, and we've really got a lot of stuff that's going to enable us to do that. Now, the really tricky thing with the Astral Drift node is actually the permanent support. This is a really, really nasty permanent support as permanent supports go. I would argue that this might even be the nastiest permanent support we've run into. So this support reads, at the beginning of your opponent's turn, your creatures gain can't block and hexproof until end of turn. When you activate your third loyalty ability, you may exile each non-token creature you control. If you do, return those creatures to the battlefield with their reinforcements. Then your creatures get plus two plus two. Now this is particularly nasty because it means that during each player's turn, their opponent's creatures have hexproof. You cannot use typical removal methods to get rid of their creatures, assuming you are going to consider targeted removal as that specific removal. Furthermore, it means that you cannot make creatures that have Defender or Vigilance or Reach or something like that and expect them to block and kill your opponent's creatures. So in all, it just makes it so that removing your opponent's stuff is a lot more difficult. You want to make sure that you have non-targeted removal or that you're running something like Shadow Spear that makes it so that your opponent's creatures cannot get Hexproof in the first place. Then we've got Time Rift, which is the permanent support that reads at the beginning of each player's turn, reinforce this support. At the end of each player's turn, if this support is reinforced 12 or more times, it loses all of its reinforcements and all cards in each player's hand gain full mana and each player gains 30 loyalty. So this is gonna be happening after turn number six, because you're uh, because you know it's going to trigger during your turn, opponent's turn, your turn, opponent's turn. Uh, but beyond that, it also because we have to slow our decks down just a little bit, uh, we're very likely going to have time rifts go off on this node, and so you want to make sure that you are prepared for that, especially because you can't use non-targeted removal. So this is definitely going to make this a tricky objective for a lot of players. Now, if we go back to our objectives of cast three creatures that cost 11 or more and activate a Planeswalker ability two or more times during a fight, the deck that I've put together that I will be using makes a heck of a lot more sense. So I've got Garruk's Harbinger, which is going to fetch more and more green creatures every time it deals damage to our opponent. Uh, and then it's going to give them mana. Uh, with this creature, because of the other things that we have that can buff it, it effectively gives them full mana. We've also got Toll Smear, Friend of the Wolves, as the other, or Friend Two Wolves, as the other creature in the deck. It is also a green creature, so that means that it will get fetched, it will get the mana, and when we play this thing, the uh, the, the the wolf token, the 5-5 Voja wolf token, is going to come in, and because of Toll Smear's abilities, it's going to start removing our opponent's creatures for us. I am running Shadow Spear because it does indeed make it so that your opponent's creatures cannot gain hexproof. Now, even though I don't actively have any targeted removal in this deck, it does mean that I will be able to use Garrick's second ability, Stalk the Prey, to go ahead and specifically target and destroy creatures that I want to get rid of, and then get the life gain and the card draw for it. 
Now the third ability, the Cursed Predation, is actually the ability that I'm intending to get more out of because that Cursed Predation token is going to give me this wonderful support that's going to give my creatures Berserker and Death Touch. It's also going to make it so that my non-human creatures get plus four plus four per turn, which means that the Harbinger is going to be buffing up every turn, and the more that it buffs up, the more mana it's going to be giving to the things it fetches. Because both of my creatures are going to have Death Touch, my opponent's creatures really stand no real chance of survival or any chance to be able to stay on the battlefield for that matter. I've got a lot of life gain between Shadow Spear, Tulsimir, and Garrick's second ability here, Stalk the Prey. So hopefully this lets me survive some of the nastiness that my opponents are going to throw at me. I decided to run green gem conversion instead of black because Castle Garen Brig is going to give us huge windfalls of, of mana, especially with that activated green gem. And Nissa's Pilgrimage is just a really low cost support that's going to basically do the same thing as something like Gingerbread Cabin, uh, but it costs three mana instead of 10. Now for removal, you'll see that my removal is non-targeted. I have Discovery, uh, which I could use as card draw, or alternatively, I can use it to return the opposing creature with the greatest cost to my opponent's hand and have them discard a card. And I also have, and this is absolutely a must, not necessarily this specific card, uh, but something that does effectively what this card does, and that is a board wipe. Now, I like Ruinous Ultimatum because it is a board wipe against my opponent. It does not wipe my side like something like the Great Aurora will, but the Great Aurora is a great option. Uh, there's also like Flooded Tears or something. It's a blue card. That's a great option too. Um, you could go with Displacement Wave. There's a lot of different things, but because your opponent is likely to get that big boom before you where they're going to get full mana to all the cards in their hand and 30 loyalty, you're going to want to make sure that you have something that can combat that, right? Just just something that can, that can take it down. Now, I've also got Nissa's Revelation for even more card draw and even more life gain. Uh, just having that extra card draw is generally pretty useful, pretty helpful. And then I've got Nylea to be fetching my creatures and then Court of Calling so also to give me creature fetch, but if I want, I can use it as removal in getting another Toll Smear and having that token come down. So this, this deck should uh, give me an excellent uh, combination of removal, power, life gain, and card draw so that I can really just stay in the game and beat my opponents, largely regardless of the general nonsense shenanigans that are going to happen. Now, uh, in some fairness, it's very possible that, you know, your opponent gets that that big windfall before you, they're running Brocon, they bring out three guys' revenges or something horrible or like Quartzwood Crashers and you're just like, oh no, this just got yucky really fast. And that can happen, right? Um, but really you're just, you're, you're looking for your best shot at winning. So this, I think this deck will do that for me. Now, uh, let's see, what else, what else can you do, right? Let's say that you can't make this Garrick Cursed Huntsman deck. How would I go about building for this particular node? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a Planeswalker that you're going to be able to activate the loyalty abilities for pretty easily. Now, Garruk I like because Garruk's abilities are all very reasonably costed, uh, namely the Stalk, the Prey, and Cursed Predation, but you could very well go for a Planeswalker that has a first ability that does not cost a whole lot. Uh, for this particular example, I am going to be showing off Hualti Radiant Champion because Hualti's abilities make it so that you get more loyalty. And as such, you're going to be able to uh, use your, your loyalty abilities very frequently. Now, uh, this is just my example for how should you go about building a deck for this node if you cannot build the deck that I put in, right? So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually go to your creatures and you're going to want to narrow down to your standard creatures, right? So the whole bottom row plus that last one in the, the middle row up there, that Ravnica set. And you're going to want to go ahead and select your creatures that are going to have a converted mana cost of 11 or greater. You should have plenty of these at your disposal. Ideally, they're going to do more for you than just be big beat sticks on the battlefield. And also, ideally, they're not going to be things that have something like Defender or Reach or Vigilance, because that's really not going to do anything for you on this node, which is... Uh, you know, which is which is too bad. Now, having something that has, for example, Berserker is going to help you out a lot because if your critter has Berserker, that means that it's going to be able to swing in and kill your opponent's creatures. So if you want, you could even go ahead and type in Berserker 
but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the, uh, just just for all intents and purposes here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the Nyx Bloom Ancient because this is a strong green creature that has Berserker. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and then for, once again, more all intents and purposes, I'm gonna look through uh, my creatures. I'm gonna narrow this down actually um, for you guys just because I really don't need to be looking through every single creature that I own, I might as well just narrow it down a bit, right? Um, so for for my next creature here, I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit of a different route than last time. And I'm actually going to go ahead and throw in Angel of Grace. So Angel of Grace, even though I know I said, don't throw things in that have Defender, you're not throwing this one in for having Defender, you're throwing this one in for when this creature enters the battlefield, your creatures and Planeswalker gain prevent damage until the beginning of your next turn. So you throw this one in because when you know that that big boom is coming, you just play an Angel of Grace that turn on turn 11, and then you know that on your opponent's turn 12, when they get that huge boom boom baddie, uh, you're not going to take any damage. So you're going to survive whatever it is they have at their disposal. And so if you've got something that can wipe their side of the board, you're going to be in fantastic shape. So I'm throwing an Angel of Grace here too. And then for the last of my critters that I'm going to throw in here, I'm going to go ahead and throw in Otrimi. I'm throwing in Otrimi because I can use Otrimi to mutate onto the Angel of Grace, and that's gonna make it so that the Angel of Grace's ability is gonna go off uh, for us again. I'm throwing it in there so that we can uh, make more Nyx Bloom Ancients, we can mutate that, we can make them bigger, and then it's just gonna be giving stuff back from the graveyard, so I really like Otrimi. I know uh, I'm choosing specifically a bunch of like wackadoodle creatures that it's like, oh man, I probably don't have these, right? Uh, I mean, you could even actually throw in Gerard because Gerard has uh, that super, super sweet, wonderful Berserker and First Strike. But I mean, that's that's a masterpiece from the newest set. So yeah, okay. Next thing, once you've done that, so this is, this is gonna be the really tricky bit, right? You want to go ahead and go to your spells and just type in destroy again, right? But this time you're gonna want to go about this a little bit different of a way. You're gonna wanna look for your cards that are able to destroy things without targeting them. So a few really great options are things like Consecrate, because the flip side Consume destroys the first creature with the greatest power and then gives you life. So that's a fantastic option. Something like Status is actually uh, pretty decent in that it's also going to have non-targeted removal. The only downside is that because it's gonna destroy an artifact or an enchantment first, it means that it's less reliable as creature removal, and that definitely hurts. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in Casualties of War because, you know, I, I have Casualties of War. And then I've once again forgotten to tap Origins, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the Great Aurora instead of Ruinous Ultimatum. Yes, Ruinous Ultimatum is better, but remember I'm trying to make this a little bit different than the other deck that I showed just a second ago. Remember, you don't have to have these cards. It's specifically about what you're going for. You're going for creatures that are gonna help you with the objectives, right? And then you're also going for removal that's non-targeted. So priority one, get your creatures that are gonna help give you some form of uh, removal that bypasses hexproof or prevent damage for you or or just you know some, some other kind of good ability. Maybe it's gonna be card draw, something good. Uh, and then the, the second piece is gonna be removal that's non-targeted. For the third piece of this, you're absolutely gonna wanna go ahead and throw in your gem conversion based on whatever your best mana gain is. So for me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and once again type in convert green because I, I'm running a green planeswalker here so I'm going to throw in Garen Brig and Pilgrimage again and then to top this all off you're going to want some kind of card draw and you're going to want some kind of uh, yeah fetch if you have it right card draw fetch those are the kinds of things so I really like using Court of Calling for this node just because it fetches a creature for us and it gives it full mana so that guarantees that that's gonna help us with that cast three or more creatures that cost 11 or more. And then for the card draw, because I am running Watley here, I am going to go ahead and throw in Nissa's Revelation. Uh, I'm, who am I kidding? Nissa's Revelation. Nalthazar, you are going crazy today. You are not running that. You are going to go to Whirlwind of Thought because you're gonna be smart about this. So Whirlwind of Thought, if you have access to Whirlwind of Thought, uh, this is an, a fantastic option for this node because it's gonna give you a ton of loyalty. 
I know this might sound a little bit odd, but Hyxis is going to be an amazing card for this node. Also, because you can use it to freeze down your opponent's creatures before they have the big boom turn. And then well, if they're already frozen down, then your opponent's really not going to be able to do as much to you. So Hyxis could be a very good choice here. But nonetheless, this is what I would personally go with for this if I wasn't going with my main deck. Well, actually, no, it's not exactly what I'd go with, but it follows the same general rules that I'm going for here, right? So you're going to want to have creatures that do something good beyond being beef sticks. You're going to want your non-targeted removal. That's the Consecrate, Casualties of War, Great Aurora. You're going to want your gem converters. That's the Garen Brig Pilgrimage. And you're going to want your card draw slash fetch. And that's where I'm running Court of Calling and Whirlwind of Thought. So hopefully this helps you as you consider what you're going to be running in, in your decks. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be a little bit tricky. I will likely remake both of the videos once I've gotten a feel for the event and I've got a, a little bit better of an idea for things, but I do imagine that both of my decks will get me a perfect score in this event. So best of luck to you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.